All right, so many people have requested this video. I'm gonna show you how you can travel the world for cheap in 2020. Now look, there are so many places that you can go in the world. Right now, we're in Japan, and I've had so many people ask me, Nate, how are you traveling to all these different places? We've been on about 40 some flights in 2019, and people ask, how do you afford it? How are you able to travel for a couple hundred dollars for a week's worth of travel around the world? I'm gonna show you everything in this video. We're gonna break it down into three parts. We're gonna talk about how you're actually getting to your destination. Are you flying? How are you getting your flights? Where are you finding your flights? We're gonna talk about accommodation, some of the cheapest ways to stay for you know, 20, 30, $40 a night. And then we'll talk about food. We're gonna talk about some other travel tips as well to save you a lot of money. And look, the point of this, it's not to be cheap about this and try to pinch pennies when you're traveling. I love spending money when I travel, but the idea here is that if you can spend less money on certain areas when you're traveling, you can end up going on more trips. You can end up going to uh, very cool destinations instead of going to the beach for a week and spending thousands of dollars on a very expensive hotel. There's a lot of other options out there. So let's get into that right now. Let's talk about one of the first things is how we're gonna find cheap flights. Okay, so when it comes to actually getting to your destination, there's a couple tips that we can have for you guys. One of them uh, is using a service that is really going to get you the best prices. So everybody kind of has their own options for this and their own best things for this. Some people use Kayak, some people use uh, Scott's Cheap Flights. Uh, I, I personally use Google Flights. Now, this is a personal preference. I think Google is kind of the best when it comes to most things. I find the cheapest prices on there. I'll kind of show you guys what I do for myself when I book tickets. There's a couple things that are really important to take into consideration though. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll book one-way tickets instead of booking round trip, because that way, in some cases, it can be cheaper to fly to different cities and schedule different layovers on your own rather than just kind of relying on these flight checkers to do it for you. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll pull up Google Flights and then I'll set my airport location. A great tip for this is try to find an airport that's pretty big around you. Say that you have two airports, both uh, equally distant from your house that you live in right now. Uh, one of them is a major international airport and the other one's like a smaller hometown one. The major airports, you're generally gonna find cheaper flights all around. So just keep that in mind, the bigger the airport, the better. So for, for me, uh, Philadelphia airport is literally like a couple miles away or uh, uh, New York even, I can find some incredibly cheap flights out of there. So try to get those bigger airports. So for example, for this date, December 11th, if you're flexible, you could fly from Philadelphia to Las Vegas for $15. Uh, that's not a joke, you can actually go for $15. Frontier Air, you're probably gonna get to your destination. They have relatively new planes, but it's $15. It's one way, you're gonna have to buy your return ticket somehow. But you can see that you can find some really cheap flights on Google Flights. Uh, you know, I've honestly never seen them for as low as 15. That's a pretty <laughs> good deal to go across the country, across the United States. As you can see, 15. All right, so we also found a return ticket from Vegas to Philadelphia on the 14th for, once again, $15. So your total round trip ticket to Vegas is going to be $30 for planes. Now you're gonna have to pay for hotels or uh, find a place to stay in an Airbnb. But account, look, travel, it doesn't need to be that expensive. This is literally one of the cheapest flights I've ever seen uh, that you can get. And you just have to be really, really proactive about this. Try to get these tickets in about six weeks beforehand. Uh, and you're going to find some really, really great deals. Now, another thing that you want to uh, take into consideration is if you can really uh, focus on being flexible when it comes to where you're going. So what I'll do on Google Flights here is I'll just set this destination to the Explore page and then I'll just look around the globe for cheap flights. And sometimes you can end up in places that you never would have otherwise thought you were going to be in. So for example, I didn't plan on coming to Tokyo until a couple of weeks ago when I went on Google Flights and I just found a very inexpensive flight to get here for a few hundred dollars, which is pretty cheap to go from New York to Japan for that cheap of a price. And that's just because I was very open to where I, I was willing to go for myself. Now, another thing is, if you can be kind of flexible when it comes to the dates that you're traveling. So generally, if you're traveling during the week, say on a Tuesday, it's going to be cheaper than traveling on the weekend, traveling on a Friday night or uh, right before Thanksgiving or right before Christmas when everybody's trying to travel, it's gonna be more expensive. So find the times when less people are traveling. A great time like the fall right now, October or November, I suppose it is, uh, it's, it's gonna be pretty cheap. All right, so now let's talk about accommodation. There's really four options that are available to you. The first one is hotels. Now look, I really, I'm not a big fan of hotels. I see so many families go on vacation and they'll spend like $2,000 for a week for a hotel. They're spending like $300 a night for hotels. And I just don't think it's worth it. Um, it's something that I generally don't do. 
The only time I'll stay in hotels is if I am in a country where it's relatively inexpensive, say Mexico, uh, or if I'm in an area where it's a little bit dangerous, maybe the government's not so stable, then staying in a reputable hotel could be a good option rather than just like staying at somebody's house in a random country. The other option, especially if you're traveling with a number of people, uh, is to use Airbnbs. I think this is a great option for uh, whenever you're looking for just something cheaper than a hotel, especially if you're like five or six or seven people, that's gonna be one of your best options. Now, I also like to travel in hostels. Uh, this is generally for people who are younger, in their 20s, in their 30s, but this can really save you a lot of money. Some people don't like doing this, uh, and it, it, it's not for everybody, but essentially, just imagine a hotel room, but with multiple beds that random people sleep in. I'm not picky about it, though. I'm, I'm really not. I found some of my favorite, best memories that I've had this year uh, came from just meeting people in hostels and ending up meeting people and then finding out, you know, they're going to a different country, they're going to, to France or they're going to Israel somewhere and I just end up making friends and going to the next country with them kind of out of the blue unexpectedly uh, and I, I think it's just really fun for myself it's generally for younger people though 20s and 30s I would say but you can get ones for 20 30 maybe $40 a night at the most for a bed uh, which is pretty cheap when it comes to travel comparing that to say hotels right now in Japan we're actually staying in some pod hotels, which I think is one of the coolest concepts I've seen in quite some time. So I'll show you guys this. I think it's just absolutely ridiculous, but in a good way. Uh, so it kind of looks like coffins, but everybody has their own little pod. Uh, it's just a bed. There's not many accommodations. It's not like a five-star hotel. There's no pool, uh, but I think it's just so cool. Now they really cram people in here, but it's so cheap. It's like $40 a night. You know, people don't think that they can travel the world for cheap. This is $40 a night. That's, that's really inexpensive. Uh, that's what, $1,200 a month if you're gonna stay there for a month. That's cheaper than some people's rent that they pay in their apartment or in their house. So uh, I think this is so cool. They have plenty of accommodations here. They have showers, obviously. Uh, the, the culture over here is so much different. You can't walk around shoes in this pod hotel, um, but it's, it's, it's really cool. So I, I barely fit in here. I'm a little bit tall. My feet don't quite hang out of this. Uh, you can close it too, you can close the blinds and uh, it's pretty quiet and it's pretty cool. So they're actually putting these pods in some different cities as well. I think they have them in New York. I know they're gonna put them in Philadelphia, LA, a number of other cities throughout the world. So looking at hostels, looking at pod hotels, these other things, if you're not really picky, it's something that will save you a lot of money. And then finally, the fourth option when it comes to accommodation is doing some type of couch surfing. Now, I wanna be careful with this because uh, this can sometimes not go so well or go as planned. My tip for this is like only sleep on people's couches that you're friends with that you already know previously. Uh, there's some websites for it like couchsurfing.com that I know people who have used them and had a good time, but I would just be careful like sleeping on strangers' couches. That's a little bit weird. Um, but yeah, if you can just make friends with people around the world, you're gonna end up having places to stay. And the one thing my mom taught me from a young age is don't invite yourself over to people's houses. So, you know, don't just tell your friend that you're gonna stay at their place for a week, but let them invite you and then you have a place to stay for free. Uh, and then when they come and visit your city, you can just let them sleep on your couch and it's just kind of a mutual thing that I think is just a great way for everybody to save money and just get a better experience all around the board. Now, the last thing we're gonna talk about here is talking about food and some other various expenses when it comes to traveling. So for food, uh, you know, I see a lot of people where they'll go out and they'll eat like three times a day uh, when they're going on these vacations. Maybe it's because they, they're so used to cooking back home and they wanna just splurge and spend some money and not have to worry about making food. Uh, but there's a lot of cheaper options and still getting some really cool cultural experiences. Uh, last night we went to some ramen vending machine place and it was like, it was like $2.50 for some ramen at, at, at these vending machines. Uh, and I just thought it was really, really cool. Whereas other people might spend $100 on a meal at like a fancy Japanese sushi restaurant somewhere. It's just not worth it to me. I really don't like spending a lot of money on food. I'm not picky when it comes to it. I think every, like all food tastes good uh, and I'm pretty spoiled when it comes to that. So uh, just being more willing, being more open to trying places that are the cheap eats places around the world, it's gonna save you a lot of money. There's so many videos out there and blog posts about that too of pretty much any city that you can go to. I see these videos about like these dollar meal challenges, but sometimes that food can be some of the best food that you're gonna have uh, whenever you travel. So saving money on that. Uh, I don't rent cars when I travel. I think renting cars, it's just an extra expense you gotta pay for. Uh, you got to pay for parking for it. There's just too many other expenses involved with it. I'll just use public transportation. Uh, and then I also love traveling light. So we're actually gonna roll that video out next week about traveling on sort of like a minimalist approach from this. But I have 
pretty much one bag. For this trip, I did bring this other backpack too because I had some of my camera gear, my laptop in it, and I'm probably gonna be gone for maybe a month outside of the US. So I had to bring a little bit more stuff, but traveling light, it creates a lot less headache and it's actually cheaper. When you don't have to check bags, uh, it's gonna be cheaper all around the board and just so much easier for yourself. So hopefully you found some value in this video. If you guys have any questions, let me know down in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. I read every single comment. I read every single DM that you guys send me. Sometimes I can't respond to everybody because I just don't have enough time for it. It would take up my entire day, uh, but I try my best. So thanks for supporting the channel. Thanks for subscribing, dropping a like. I really appreciate all of it. This channel has been growing pretty fast recently. So um, yeah, I love it. Thanks guys. And I'll see you in the next video.